So entering truth and building additional temporary tools. This is the last few tools we build before we actually enter the real system that we'll be building. Um, yeah, it says it shows how to build the last missing bits of the temporary system tools needed to build various packages. Now that all circular dependencies have resolved, a true environment completely completely isolated from the host operating system, except for the running kernel, obviously, can be used for the build. More pr for proper operation of the isolated environment, some communication with the running kernel must be established. This is done via so-called virtual kernel file systems, which will be mounted before entering the true environment. You may want to verify that they are mounted by issuing the find mount command. Um, until section 7.4 entering the true environment, the commands must be run as root with the LFS variable set after in entering true all commands are run as root. Fortunately, without access to the OS of the computer you built LFS on, be careful anyway, as it's easy to destroy the whole LFS system with bad commands because we are root. <clears throat> so 7.2 changing ownership the commands in the remainder of this book must be formed while logged in as user root and no longer as user LFS also double check that the LFS variable is set in the roots environment so I'm going to do control D here to log out I'm going to do echo dollar LFS and we've got LFS set so that's good uh, currently the whole directory hierarchy in LFS is owned by the user LFS and a user that exists only on the host system. If the directories and files under LFS are kept the same, uh, kept as they are, they'll be owned by a user ID without a corresponding account. This is dangerous, this is dangerous because the user created later could get this same user ID and would own all the files under LFS, thus exposing files to possible malicious manipulation. To address this issue, change the ownership of the LFS directories to use the root by running the following commands. So we'll run this one first, which does the actual changing of ownership. And this one, which changes it for the lib64 directory, if we've got it, which we have. So that's done. Preparing the virtual kernel file systems. Applications running in user space utilize various file systems created by the kernel to communicate with the kernel itself. These file systems are virtual, no disk space is used for them. The content of these file systems resides in memory. These file systems must be mounted in LFS directory trees so the applications can find them in a true environment. So begin by creating the directories where the virtual file systems will be mounted. And the first one we do is to mount dev which is where all the devices that are held in memory are located. And then the remaining virtual file systems, virtual kernel file systems can be mounted. So as it says, these aren't real file systems, they only exist in memory, they're made to exist and made to appear as if they're real file systems by the kernel. In other host systems, all oh right, so in some host systems, dev shm is a symbolic link to a directory, typically run shm. The run tempfs was mounted above, so in this case, <clears throat> only a directory needs to be created with the correct permissions. In other host systems, dev shm is a mount point <clears throat> for a tempfs. In that case, the mount of a dev above will only create the dev shm as a directory in the true environment. In this situation, we must explicitly mount tempfs. So we can run this in because it checks to find out um, what dev shm is. So we'll put that in and you can see that it has actually mounted tempfs at dev shm for us instead of installing so it took that path in our case because it did the mount command so that's done now we go on to actually entering the true command and yes as i suspected they've actually got make flag set in the truth command now which they never used to have and moreover they've got an 
extra variable called test suite flags which I presume will allow some test suites to run on multiple processors and again they're also using as before they're using the nproc command to derive how many processors are available or threads can be run concurrently on the system so this is really good before I used to have to hack this together myself and now um, the Linux and Scratch team have added in extra features which just make things a little bit easier for us both in, in terms of not having to hack your own command together but also by default enabling you to use uh, all the cores you've got available on the system. It does say that some test suites aren't affected by uh, make flags uh, and that's why the test suite flags environment variable is used instead. So let's paste that in and you'll see we've gone straight into this true environment. Uh, they've modified the prompt so it shows that we're in the truth and this I have no name gets explained here because it says the etc password file has not been created yet. Um, there's no such thing as the LFS variable either anymore because we're in the true environment. This root is the root of our new system. So the root of the uh, operating system is not visible, which is why it said that it's uh, a little bit safer now, the operating system, because we haven't got direct access to it anymore. But because we're running things as root now, we can still do lots of damage to our new uh, LFS system. So we've still got to be very careful. Um, and it says here about if you leave the environment uh, to set up the, well, you'd have, you'd have to mount the partitions first. You'd have to set up the virtual kernel file systems and um, re-enter true again. Um, and if you want to see that being done, I have done it in, uh, I think, the previous uh, Linux from Scratch, Linux from Scratch, from Scratch 12. I've done it, so if you want to see that done, but basically that's all you need to do is to remount the partitions in the correct place, set the LFS environment variable correctly, um, and then do these two sections here, and then enter that true command that we've just run, uh, this one here. So first thing we've got to do is create some more directories for the new system. Uh, it says they may have, been, may have been already created earlier with explicit instructions or when installing some packages, but they're repeated here just for completeness. And then there's a required set of subdirectories off of these ones that need to be created. So let's do these one at a time and just check the output to make sure there's no problems with what we're doing. So as long as we're getting output saying it's a directory has been created with what we've put in. So for example, this one's creating man one to eight. So we can see them there, one to eight. Uh, that looks okay. We're not getting any errors either. So that's good. So a couple of links here, si oops, sim links. And looks like a couple more directories with specific permissions are being installed here. So it says there about that. A compliance note. Uh, in LFS we create only the directories that are really necessary. However, feel free to create more directories if you wish. And there's this warning about user lib64 again that we saw before. <clears throat> so creating essential files and sim links so still some more housekeeping to be done to set up the new system 
before we do any compiling or any further compiling. <clears throat> and remember, this is still temporary tools we're building here. It's not the final system, but all these files and directories will be used by the final final system. So the password for root will be set later. So we've just set the password file. And we're now going to create the group file. And it explains all about that. Um, we create next a test user, which we used for certain tests, where I presume where they can't be run by the root or need to be run as an unprivileged user. And it says to get rid of the I have no name prompt, we can run this command here to re-log in. And because we've got the etc password file, you can see that error or warning has gone now. And finally, we'll just create some files which need to exist for them to be used and change ownership of them or some of them. <clears throat> and it says the W temp B temp last log files use 32 bit integers for timestamps and they'll be fundamentally broken after the year 2038. Many packages have stopped using them and other packages are going to stop using them. It's probably best to consider them deprecated. Okay. So get text is the first package we're going to build inside the true environment for the temporary tools. So we'll go to sources initially. Extract get text. And start building. Or configuring rather, and then, then we can build. Okay, let's now compile the package. Okay, that's uh, built. So we only install certain programs out of this package for now. And that's done. Now move on to Bison. So configure the package.
and build it. And install it. And that's Bison complete. And next we do Perl. So we've got this big configure command to set it up. and run make to build it And finally install it, and it's done. Next, we've got Python. The Python package, um, as it says here, is the package with a capital P. Uh, the other one, I think, is a help file or something. So, got to remember to extract with a capital P Python. Start with the configuration. And build it with make. So there's a note here about Python 3 modules can't be built now because dependencies are not installed yet. Um, so that's this bit here. For the SSL module, a message Python requires open SSL 111 or new is outputted. So there it is there. That output, that should say. The message should be ignored. So that's okay. Just make sure the top level make command has not failed. Well, it says... Um, checked 111 module zero failed on import so there doesn't look like any errors there at all and it says the optional models modules are not needed now they'll be built in chapter 8 so let's just go ahead and install python and tidy up remember it's capital P don't go deleting the other file by accident it would be quite easy to do so text info next. Uh, very simple and straightforward configure, make and make install. build it and install and that's complete move on to util linux uh, so first we'll create a directory then we run this 
quite a large configure command in. And then compile it. And finally, we can build it. That's uh, right, install it. And that's done. Uh, so, next, we'll be doing cleaning up and saving the temporary system. So it says there's some documentation files that can be removed to prevent them in ending up on the file system, final system, sorry. So let's remove those. And the LA files can cause package failures in BLFS. So let's remove those. And the current system size is now about three gigabytes. However, the tools directory is no longer you needed. And we can delete it. So let's get rid of that. And it says you can back up the system now, um, which might be useful to come back to this point if something gets trashed. Uh, I'm not gonna do this this time. I think I did it last time in uh, LFS 12.0 video. So if you do want to follow this through either read through here or, or watch my video and it tells you how to restore it if you do need to you know if something that does go wrong you need, do need to restore it uh, but apart from that the all we've got left to do is to build the actual Linux from scratch system itself